Just a forward to this experiment. Uh, this is the extended experiment. Uh, I'll have a more consumable video, uh, a shorter one available pretty much immediately. Uh, however, uh, this is for those that wanted a more in-depth look at the process uh, so that you can be more informed. Enjoy. Welcome back to Who Chose. Well, on my never ending quest for the perfect propagation technique to move from seed to my seedling propagator, I found this. This is a kitchen seed sprouter. And essentially, it's used to propagate uh, the seeds that you use on sandwiches and stuff. Um, to give you a readily available source of sprouts in the kitchen. But what are the seeds that we're trying to sprout other than seeds that need sprouting? So this could possibly be the thing that I've been looking for to take my seeds to the point where I can put them in my propagator. Now, I've actually had a quick look in one of the boxes already, and it's quite exciting uh, because in each one of the levels of this system, there's a little device that we'll all be quite familiar with. Let me show you how it works. So in the contraption that we have here, we've actually got mini bell siphons. Um, they don't call them mini bell siphons in the instructions, but that's exactly what they are. Uh, they don't have a shroud, and instead of a shroud, they have like a media stopper on the outside, which is really cool. I haven't seen anything like that before. Um, so as you fill each seed tray, uh, it drains into the next. I'll, sh I'll show you. I haven't actually tried this yet, so... Um, so you fill it up and as it hits the top, oh, <laughs> that's bloody, that's bloody real cool. <laughs> and the perforations, it looks like the perforations in the, uh, bottom of each container actually stop all the water from leaving. Um, it would stop the seeds from moving around. And then as it drains into the next section, the bell siphon in the next se section then drains it into the following section until it uh, drains completely into the bottom, bottom reservoir. It's, it's so cool that this works on such a small scale. And also what I like about this is uh, that each of these compartments acts as a humidity dome, except for the top one. Uh, and you could realistically just leave the top one free. So as this device is you know, quite obviously made for seed propagation, I can't really see us having too much of an issue with it. Um, perhaps the bulk quantity of seeds uh, that you use for sprouting in this um, might help with um, keeping moisture content up. But other than that, um, can't see any reason not to give it a go. And it would require you to strain water through it uh, three or four times a day. But I think I'm going to cut that back to two and just see how we go. But uh, I'll, I'll let you know anyway. So let's throw some seeds in it and um, actually see if it works. Uh, got so many eggplants, like seed. Oh, it's, it's real. It's honestly one of the hardest. Seed choosing isn't easy. I've got so much eggplant, like it's just out of control. I'm gonna make more eggplant. I'm gonna. I'm. Put, we're going with more eggplant. All right. So I've emptied the water out. Oh man! Like if this system works, oh, I'm. I'm so excited because it's just so. It's 
so easy to manage. Like all you have to do, all I have to do is like pour the seeds in. So I'm going to throw some, because I can tell what these two seeds are. So I'm just going to throw some, what are these ones? These are pickling gherkins in with the broad beans. Um, let's get you on a closer shot. All right. Um, onions. I am going to try and invent a way to keep onions in an NFT system. Um, just for shits and giggles. Sorry, just for um, S's and G's. Alrighty, so onions, I'll just spread them over like that, I guess, and yeah, cool. You can also label the outsides of these, like what seeds you have, like this is ingenious. God, I hope it works. I really, I want it to work. I want it to work so bad. All right, basil, this one is basil, and it's going little basil seeds. Why do some have inner packets and some don't? Um, these ones need to pretty much be soaked uh, for a while, if I remember correctly. So I'm going to leave, I'm actually going to leave them in the bottom container to soak. There's another use for the bottom container. So I'll leave them in the bottom container to soak, which actually is good because the top container doesn't have a lid and won't be as humid. Once they've sprouted, I can move them to the top container. Yes, this is a good system. All right, let's put it together and we'll run the water through for the first time. So they're all labeled up. Uh, in the top, we've got beans and pickles, uh, basil, onion, and beetroot, which are gonna soak down the bottom for like 24 hours um, until such time as they get moved up to the top. Um, or actually I might move whichever sprouts first up to the top because they'll be the hardiest. And yeah, I'll place it near a windowsill and it'll be good to go. Let's fill the top and let the water drain through the seeds and start the process. And the instructions say to put it on a sunny windowsill. So that's what I'm going to do. So every day um, before and after work, I would just water the seeds or, or run it through the system. Um, and the seeds were doing really well. Uh, they made it pretty much all the way through um, till at one point I started seeing uh, on the larger seeds, the beans, uh, black uh, sores, I guess. Um, and I'm pretty sure this was just from lack of moisture. Uh, even though the sections were acting as humidity domes, there was just not enough you know, moisture held without any medium. So I made it all the way to day nine without a problem, but uh, the roots started to air crop, I think is the term. If I'm wrong, let me know. Um, and there just wasn't enough uh, moisture for the seeds to continue. So I decided to continue the experiment by mixing vermiculite and perlite in 50-50 ratios, as this would allow me to keep it soilless. Um, and once the seeds had fully exhausted their uh, natural nutrients, I can run hydroponic nutrient at a diluted ratio through the propagation containers, uh, which is really good because it means that I can start the seeds uh, in the hydroponic nutrient pretty much 
as soon as they're ready. And the flooding and draining of each individual section uh, would give the seeds nutrients and water, but then uh, drain the medium afterwards and provide a really good propagation material. So at this next stage of um, the experiment, I wanted to try out uh, a different uh, growing media. So I threw some cotton wool in, put some seeds in. Um, I, at this point, I had already bought another two of the um, sprouting devices. So uh, I, was, I was pretty much all in. <laughs> uh, so I used uh, just cotton wool in one of them and just vermiculite in the other because I wanted to see what uh, the, how the plants would respond to pure vermiculite. Uh, and it, it didn't end up too well. Uh, it, was, it was too moist. Uh, there wasn't enough oxygen uh, for the plants. So the perlite and vermiculite mix is very important. So the light I used in this video was a Mars Hydro uh, TS-1000 and uh, Mars Hydro supplied it to me uh, in exchange for doing some videos for them. So uh, the links are in the description and uh, I've been impressed with it so far. So one quirk of uh, the sprouting system is that when the containers fill, uh, the perlite has a chance to rise to the top of the growing medium if there's not enough growing medium in each one of the uh, sections. So you really do need to fill the section um, above that water level enough uh, so that the media doesn't have time to uh, rearrange itself. And there you have it. Soilless growing media. Uh, this system is pretty cool. Uh, I'm pretty impressed with it. Very happy. So I'm actually going to continue using this. Um, as you can see, like you need to get the right amount of, uh, you know, soilless mix in uh the containers but uh like you can see the difference between the seedlings coming through and getting rearranged every time by the perlite and uh the 50 50 vermiculite mix um so as long as you get that ratio right um and the amount in there it's it's working fantastically and they're being conditioned to the hydroponic nutrient uh pretty much you know from their first introduction to outside of their seed nutrients so there's no hardening to nutrient needed or anything i'm going to use this method from now on to get my seeds from seed to propagator uh because it eliminates any uh, contamination from soil that could end up in your propagator. And it's modular. And I, I love modular things. You know I love modular things. Uh, also, the flooding and draining of uh, the material forces oxygen in and out every flood and drain. Uh, which is one of the benefits of all flood and drain systems. Um, but uh, I can see it, you know, once I get the right amount in each one of these uh, being the fastest way to raise those seeds. These ones were um, negatively impacted by the fact that I started them without any uh, growing medium whatsoever. These ones are in the second lot. These are the radicios. Rad, radicio uh, that I planted second time round with the appropriate amount of uh, mix and uh, they started in the soilless mix. They've come through pretty much perfectly. Now I understand that not everyone's going to be able to get their hands on you know one of these. So this soilless mix will work no matter how you drain it. 
So even something like a strawberry punnet, uh, as long as it's got good drainage on the bottom, you it doesn't need to be flooded and drained. Uh, you can just pour nutrient solution over the top or uh, dip it into a tub with nutrient solution in it, um, allow it to absorb it and then remove it and let it drain because uh, the vermiculite in this mix will hold the nutrient and the perlite will allow for the growing media to drain. So it will always give you that really good balance of uh, water retention and drainage. And I'll just throw in a quick um, mention about the cotton wool. Um, I was actually really impressed, you know, um, for what it is, it works. Uh, so you can use cotton wool in this system as well. Um, I am noticing um, more discoloration uh, from algal bloom, um, whether that's because it's white and doesn't block out any light or it's because it's white and I can see it. Um, nah. But uh, the only difference would be that it's it will be harder to remove um, the individual uh, seedlings from the cotton wool because they are ingrained in that cotton wool, like very much so. Um, so I won't be using cotton wool because of the nature of the propagator that I'm transferring it into. However, if you were using the cotton wool as the you know end material and you're going into, uh, say, a flood and drain bed, um, this is a really worthwhile seed raising material. So yeah, that's how you take seed to propagator without soil. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Hucho's Extended Experiment. Have a good one.